Hey guys, Luke here from The Wild Movement. So last week I spoke about the macronutrient of protein and spoke about its importance in supporting body composition changes with strength training. This week I want to go through carbohydrate. So what I'm going to be running through is a very quick um, breakdown of how we break down pro, um, carbohydrate and how we absorb it. And then I'll also talk about its uses in terms of performance and how much carbohydrate you need and when to have your carbohydrates. So as you're probably well aware, carbohydrate has been given a bad name as of, I guess, the last five, 10 years. It was the bee's knees back in the 90s where we had to have six servings of carbs per day and then it's been since the introduction of the ketogenic diet and the paleo diet and all these other things okay there's always there's always uh different ways in terms of what macronutrient we should be eating the most of and and whatnot what i want you to get out of today is just a bit of a brief under or a understanding of why carbohydrates are important and their function so when the next big hoo-ha diet comes along you can actually apply your knowledge to that and know you know whether it's bullshit or not basically so first of all carbohydrates okay they in terms of supporting body composition they would be the second most important macronutrient after protein Protein is what we need to preserve muscle tissue, to be putting on muscle tissue, and we need a certain amount of that, and uh, we spoke about this in the last video that you can check out. Carbohydrates' main role is as a fuel source. Okay, so carbohydrates are our body's preferred fuel source in terms of movement and in terms of for our nervous system. <clears throat> the digestion of carbs, which is what I'll start with, is very simple. Okay, we basically, well, I'm gonna make it very simple. We basically ingest the carbohydrate, whatever that is, whether it's fruit, whether it's pasta, whether it's a donut, and we start breaking it down straight away in our mouth through different enzymes. As we chew our food, we break it down even more. Okay, so this chewing of food is very important. It's important with carbohydrate, it's important with protein, it's important with fats, it's important with any meal. If we are in a parasympathetic state, that is a really, a, where our body is relaxed, our body can go to work and we can secrete the right enzymes so we do break down that food correctly. If we're in a state of uh, where our sympathetic nervous system is on, that is our fight and fright nervous system, so maybe we're watching a horror movie, maybe we're having a fight with our spouse, whatever it is, being distracted even, it's going to uh, play havoc in terms of the enzymes that we can, that we, produce and secrete sorry to start breaking down that food so try and eat your food always in a relaxed manner once the carbohydrate is broken down uh, somewhat in our mouth then it comes down into our small intestine and it's broken down even further it's broken down here with four main enzymes okay lactase sucrase maltase and dextrinase or the aces and this breaks uh, the molecule now down into uh, galactose, fructose, or glucose. Okay, that's its form that is now in, in our bloodstream. From here, we actually, uh, there's different pathways now that the carbohydrate takes for absorption. There's a pathway, that they, they all have big sounding words, okay, and I'm going to keep it very simple. One is uh, glycogenesis. Glycogenesis just means that where it's the pathway where we're forming glycogen. Glycogen is glucose but in its stored form 
and we store this in our liver, in our muscles, and in our kidneys. Okay, we can only store so much of this in those areas. We're much more likely to be using that pathway of glycogenesis, that formation of glycogen, when we're in a calorie surplus, okay? When we're storing calorie surplus where we're putting on muscle. We're gonna be in glycolipolysis, when, which is breaking down that glycogen, more so when we don't have that available in our bloodstream. And this is gonna be more likely happening when we're in a calorie deficit. So this is the breaking down of glycogen from our muscles, from our kidneys and from our liver. So we can be fueled for our brain and um, for our muscles during exercise. Then we have the Krebs cycle, we have gluconeogenesis, uh, and we have glucolysis. All of these <coughs> pathways I'm not gonna go into too much. Okay, Krebs uh, cycle is basically making energy from all different forms, uh, what's called ATP, which is uh, molecules that, that, that is energy for us. The Krebs cycle is a slower uh, process, also making energy, and gluconeogenesis is using non-carbohydrate forms, such as lactate, the waste product that we uh, produce at high intensity exercise, uh, and then also things like um, protein, okay, is it's the conversion of these things for energy. So <clears throat> we have the breakdown of the carbohydrate into those smaller molecules that we spoke about with those enzymes, and then we have those five different pathways of absorption and of, of using those carbohydrates. So we need carbohydrate okay, for our brain, for our nervous system, and we need it for muscle contraction. So I'm gonna run through a little example here. Let's say I'm doing a set of curls in the gym. Okay, I'm doing 15 curls. What often happens, especially if glucose isn't in the bloodstream, i.e. we haven't had any carbohydrate post uh, pre-training, is that our nervous system will actually give out before our muscular system. Our muscular system during the bicep curls utilizes stored carbohydrate, that is glycogen. Okay, and we have enough stores there for, depending on the exercise, normally, uh, yeah, one to two hours of moderate intensity exercise. And that, think pack strength sort of style in terms of moderate intensity. So, if that's the case, if our brain actually gives out, if our nervous system gives out before our biceps in that example, our biceps actually aren't being stimulated to the point that they could be if we had glucose, if we had carbohydrate in our system before training. So carbohydrate is important for muscular contraction and also for our nervous system. And you can see in that example why it is important. So how much carbohydrate should you be having? Well, it depends, okay? Like any of these things, context is everything. I'm gonna give you some very general guidelines to, to work off though. So what you need to understand is that carbs are just a fuel source. They don't make you fat. The thing that makes you fat is excess calories. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. The thing that makes you overweight is excess calories. Doesn't matter if it's if you're eating a lot of carbohydrate or not eating much carbohydrate. But I can guarantee you that your intensity of your training, especially at a moderate to high intensity, is going to be much better with carbohydrate in the system because we need it for our brain, our nervous system, and we need it for muscular contraction. So, how much carbohydrate? As a very general rule, 
if you're sedentary, I, if you're not doing any sort of training, then zero to one gram per kilogram that you weigh. So you weigh 100 kilos, anything from zero to 100 grams of carbohydrate. I would be going, then you need to look at brain function. If you have quite a taxing job uh, and it's quite stressful, okay, I would be going closer to the 100 grams normally. If you train at a moderate intensity, so let's say you do pack strength two, three, four, five, six times per week, you're going to be looking at something between one to three grams per kilogram that you weigh. One to three grams. So if you weigh 100 kilos, that's going to be between 100 and 300 grams of carbohydrate per day. Now, if you're very active, if you do double sessions, so let's say you train pack strength in the morning and then every evening you have another type of training, then you're gonna be closer to three, four grams per kilogram that you weigh. If you're doing, yeah, okay, so that's, I'll leave it at that. If you're ultra, ultra endurance based, like you're running marathons, uh, you're knocking out, you know, 10, 20 Ks per day, maybe you're a triathlete, you're gonna need more carbohydrate again. And this is simply just a, a matter of having energy, having the fuel reserves for what you have coming up. So you're gonna need something between four, five to six grams per kilogram that you weigh. Okay, of carbohydrate per day. Now, are there differences in terms of body composition, in terms of genetics? Yes, there is. Basically, the higher body fat you are, then the less well you use those carbohydrates, the less well you partition them towards the muscle cell in terms of that glycogenesis. Uh, Okay, so you're gonna be less likely to be storing it in the liver, in the kidneys, and in the muscle if you're carrying extra fat. Now, so if you're above about 15% body fat as a male, and about 23, 24% generally as a female, you're probably gonna to wanna to stay on the lower end of those scales that I just spoke about. And then in terms of when you should have your carbohydrate, the biggest thing here is making sure that you have the energy around training so you can train hard and we can elicit a response so we get the, re we get the adaptation that we need with our training. So <clears throat> if you're training in the morning, let's say, then you want to be having most of your carbohydrate ideally before training, during training, after training. Now that window, the closer we go to that training window, then the more what's called insulin sensitive you are, and the more likely you're gonna to be to use those, to petition that carbohydrate towards the formation of glycogen in the muscle cell, in the liver, and in the kidney. The further away we go from that uh, window of training, then the less likely we are to use it for that. And this gets more important as we get higher body fat. So if you're someone with lower body fat, especially genetically like myself, then you're going to be able to get away with having carbohydrate, you know, almost at any time. Whereas when you're carrying that extra, little bit of extra fat, first of all, you're gonna be wanting to eat a little bit less carbohydrate uh, because you are not as good at using that, uh, that fuel, uh, and then also you're gonna to want to have it more around training times, okay? And that's simply so you have the reserves to train hard. Now, when we elicit, uh, when we're training for muscle growth, we wanna be going through, we wanna be eliciting a response that's called mTOR. mTOR is basically a pathway 
that increases muscle protein synthesis, which we spoke about last week in the protein video. This is the state where we're putting on muscle. Now, if we have low glycogen, so if we don't have stored carbohydrate in our muscles, in our liver, in our kidneys, because we have been on very low carbohydrate, then our mTOR response is blunted. It's much lower, our mTOR response, which means less protein synthesis and more protein breakdown. So carbs equal more chance of putting on muscle. Less carbs make it much harder to be putting on muscle. Okay, and so what I want you to take away from this is understanding that carbs are just a, a, a fuel. Okay, there's four calories per gram. Just like protein, it's, a, it's the same um, energy dense, but we need it so we can train hard at those moderate and higher intensities. And then in terms of how much, it depends on your, your body fat and it depends on the amount of training that you do. Yeah, that, they're the main things. <clears throat> and then in terms of when, then once again, it depends on your body fat and it depends on your type of training and how much training you're doing. If you're not training, if you're having an off day of training, then you simply have your carbohydrate when works for you. Because it doesn't matter, there's no difference between eating carbohydrate in the morning and eating carbohydrate at night in terms of where you're likely to, um, or how you're likely to use it. The only thing that changes how you're likely to use it is exercise. So hopefully that makes sense guys. Shoot me any questions if you have any. Um, I hope that you now understand that carbohydrates are important, especially in terms of performance at higher and sort of moderate and higher intensities. So yeah, shoot me any questions if you have any. Look forward to hearing from you.